stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, Alaska style, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. We'll get started, but first, coffee. Nice. Ethiopian from St. Thomas Roasters in Lingles Town, Pennsylvania. A gift from the John David Project. Nice job, St. Thomas. Excellent. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Happy Monday, everybody. I appreciate that. How you doing? What's going on with you? Do you have your list for the week? Are you ready to rock? It's not just another week. You're moving the ball down the field. What can you do? What can you do to make a difference in your life this week versus last week? Is there somebody you need to leave? Is there somebody you need to leave? Is there somebody that needs to leave you? I bet for some people there is. Every woman I have met in the past 10 years magically appeared when I chose to pursue excellence and not be a pickup artist. Every last one, high value, beautiful, intelligent, complimented me, not completed me, brought some great stuff out of me. Pursue excellence is the message. Listen to me, sir. Pursue excellence. Walking gets rid of the man belly before you know it. Walking, it's your goal when you're one years old. It's your goal when you are 90 years old. If you have surgery, the docs always talk about getting you up and walking. It's great for a date. Take a stroll after a date. Great on a lunch break. Just walk. Your body loves walking. You were created to walk. You know this is not just random programming that there is a renewed interest in broadcasting of the Lorena and John Bobbitt story. Right? An assault on a man? Cutting his penis off with a knife, regardless of what was going on in that relationship? This is building to a crescendo to the election in 2020. Don't doubt me on that. Very few people are truly blindsided in relationship failure. Nine out of ten of you ignored red flags that eventually became full-blown issues on your time and dime. So there's zero mercy for you. However, there's grace for you from here going out if you make the right choices. If you don't make the right choices, it will happen again. If I was on a desert island with a post-wall evangelical woman, I would build a fence down the middle of the island I would have more fun in conversation than Wilson, the volleyball, than I would with her. In one month, she would be angry and climbing the fence to come over to the other side. This is a parable. Women lose their shit when you cannot be controlled by P or the promise of P. Unfortunately, most men are the easiest manipulated beings when it comes to pee. This is why betas exist. My best film picks for 2018. Best film, 8th grade. Best horror film, Hereditary. Best actress, Toni Collette. Best actor, Joaquin Phoenix. Best Set and Wardrobe, The Movie, Colette. Next Best Horror Film, not quite a tie, but pretty close, 
first reformed with Ethan Hawke. Pop quiz. When she says, children, I have them and don't want any more, what she really means is, put your comments down below. Stop bleeding online when you go through a breakup. Stop it. Stop it. You, stop it. Michael, stop bleeding online. Stop it. You're looking foolish. You need to have a Jack Kerouac weekend. Have the funeral somehow, some way. Meaning a pre-planned, finite event where you drink, grieve, cry, pray, punch a mattress, burn and bury everything that she ever gave you. Have the funeral, Michael. Do it now or suffer forever. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is voluntary. You are choosing to suffer every single day. Every time, Michael, you post on Facebook how you did something wrong, appreciate your woman, tell her every day that you love her. Dude, you're suffering from fucking beta guilt. She left you not because of you. That's your first beta reaction. You're a weak man. You need to buck up, suck it up, and move the fuck on. She left you because of her nature, not because of you. Now, you might be a slacker, yes. But even, even if you dated or married down, she would still leave you. Dude, wake the fuck up. Your weak male training and conditioning is now coming out. I don't care how you swing hammers, how you use power washers, how blue collar you are, and how... How many trucks you have in your fleet, dude, strengthen yourself now. And I don't mean to beat you while you're down. If you want to move on and have an effective life, you need to do this. Stop blaming yourself. And all those little beta boys that are agreeing with you and the girls that are agreeing with you with their little thumbs up. She left you because of her nature, dude. The hidden, fragile loser within you makes its way to the surface only during breakups. Until then, it's heavy metal, being jacked, being a gym bro, a tough guy. Neutralize the loser within, bring him out, and whack him. Toyota anything is good, just damn good engineering. The woman you marry is never the woman you divorce. That will be ringing in the back of your head. How about No Excuses November? Nah, that's too hard. It's easier to have No Shave November. Reasons to become reformed. A, we actually believe in the sovereignty of God in all things. B, you'll never have to sing another hill song, song ever again. C, we have better memes. D, you can thumb your nose at all the lesser traditions and drink a beer without condemnation. We have the best beards. And F, all of the above. Anyone on Twitter on Saturday night is not getting laid. I'm just keeping it real. You've been telling me you're a genius since you've been 17, and all the time I've known you, I still don't know what you mean. Steely Dan, 1972. Very few talk about how deeply mentally damaged a multiple abortion woman is. 
avoid her. Do not try to understand her. Do not rescue her. I'll say it again. The shit goes deeper than you, Mr. White Knight, can ever comprehend. It should be part of our vetting process somehow, some way. No hate here. I'm just giving a damn about you, dude. The media shows a Berkeley student being ragdolled and having the shit kicked out of him by a liberal Democrat punk. And the mainstream media says, student allegedly assaulted. We saw it with our own eyes a million times, but he was allegedly assaulted. This is why you need to turn the TV off. Turn it off. It's shit. It's shit. Communicate the message to these news organizations that you are no longer interested in them. Let's read a letter. I thought I'd give a shout out. I'd never put a gun in my mouth, gratefully, but I thought I'd reach out and say you had a positive effect on me. I've always been introspective, but these last few years my spiritual journey has intensified. I've deconstructed my old notions of God and other existential foundational beliefs. Coming from an Orthodox Mormon home, this process has been liberating, grounding, and sometimes terrifying. I always found comfort and cert certainty in knowing exactly what God wants me to do, at least according to someone at the pulpit. Now as I embrace a broader reality and life's uncertainties, I just try to find peace in the moment. Whether times are pleasant or difficult, I am trying to be present and embrace whatever the moment can teach me. There's always something to learn. I was recently watching your pipe videos and I recognized in you something I also strive for, relishing each moment. When you open a jar of tobacco and smell the aroma as you sip a freshly lit pipe or you admire the craftsmanship, texture, and story behind a wooden pipe, something... Uh, something in me celebrates too. I try to do that to soak up each moment, especially with my kids. Whether we are appreciating how uh, ice has curiously grazed our driveway or the delicate leaves unfurling from our house plant, there is an awe in every moment. If we are keen to it, or even the lessons we learn from harder questions, like when a relative passed away, in many senses, this person is gone. There's a grief associated with that, but in other ways, they are with us even now. Today, my son explained that when a tree dies, it keeps living because of the seeds it planted. Deep wisdom from a six-year-old. Yes, I agree. That zest, appreciation, and introspection is why I'd like to try smoking a pipe. Any pointers for someone who hasn't smoked a pipe or ever smoked anything, for that matter? Type, brand, and flavor of tobacco, a good style of pipe to try, places to look for one. I want to find one with character and its own history. Anyways, from my effort to relish each moment, I salute you in yours. Here's to a fresh week. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Email me again and ask me about the pipe. And another one that I was hesitant to read, but I think it's interesting. Let me find it real quick. I don't like, uh, many times I get letters from ladies. This, this one is from a lady. I will let you judge this. I don't judge this. Hi, George. My name is, and I'm not going to give her name to provide privacy here. I've been watching your videos for some time now. It all started when my now ex-husband would watch your videos and I would be in the same room same room with him reading a book. I couldn't help but hear a lot of what you had to say and I found myself watching them on my own accord and taking in a lot of what you talk about. My ex-husband and I have one child together, a 13-year-old boy whose name I will not mention. To make a long story short and get to my point, my husband walked out on us, filed for divorce and hasn't been around for almost two years. After many failed attempts to contact him for our son, I gave up. 
Thankfully, I have a career and been able to take care of my son and myself, but not having a male figure for him in the house has become quite evident. He has been getting into trouble in school a lot last year and into fall this school year. We have had a few parent-principal meetings along with some of his teachers, but to no avail. He gets reprimanded and he knows there's consequences for his actions. I pride myself in my parenting and though he is acting out, I do not let him get away with it. Then all of a sudden he calls, the calls from school to me stopped around the end of October, beginning of November. I received a couple emails from his teachers stating how he is starting to turn himself around and act better in school. Even his grades have improved. I couldn't help but ask him what has changed. When I did, he said he just decided to think before acting and wonder if it was the best choice. I just smiled. I didn't question it further, and I told him I was proud. During his Christmas break, I was drinking my coffee while watching one of your videos. Thank you for reminding me here. And my son came in the room and heard your voice and asked me, what is George talking to us about today? I almost spat out my coffee and replied, excuse me? He said, what is George talking about? Ah, never mind. I will be listening to him later. Now, from my ex watching your videos and then me, I know he's heard your voice before and even looked at your video as he walked by, but this was a shock. I asked, what do you mean you will be listening later? The child said, you and dad have always watched his videos, and hearing him reminds me of dad. George is also why you don't hear from my teachers anymore. I asked him, what do you mean? He said, and I'm paraphrasing what I can remember, he's always willing to tell you, he's always telling you to be the best you can and not to disappoint, and I still get upset every now and then at school, but I've been stopping myself and asking, what would George do? I then think better of it and I calm down. So I'm looking forward to what he has to say today. And then he walked away. If you were to see the look on my face, I probably had my jaw on the floor for like five minutes trying to comprehend all of this. I've been trying to get through to him for almost a year now. He has been watching your videos. Uh, I now know for almost eight months and something somewhere you have said, you have said has gotten through to him. As a mother, I do sometimes get a little nervous thinking about some of the things he may hear, but overall I know your videos are in good intentions and I can't argue with the results. Obviously my curiosity got the best of me, so we've talked more about him and his watching of your videos. He was more focused on making sure he acted like a man, his words, not mine, and it's incredible to see the difference. It started off as something to make him feel closer to his father who abandoned him and has now turned into watching his role model help guide him along the way through adolescence. I just can't thank you enough. It still blows my mind to think about it, but I am more grateful than you will ever know. For a while, you have mentioned in your videos that people comment stating that you are the father or grandfather they never had. Well, you can apparently add one more person to that list. Thank you for your insight, wisdom, and knowledge that I myself take in. But more importantly, thank you for helping my son turn himself around without even knowing it. That's a gift and a true power right there. God bless, and then she gives her name. And with that, I'm going to say, finish your coffee. Wow. Hey, George. Is this how I'm going to get unstuck for 2019 and make my first million by the end of 2020? Thanks for showing me the Vortex Method.